Mitch Jackson. All right. Thank you. Nice job. Thanks for being here. But what I'm going to talk to you about today is building relationships, expanding your sphere of influence so that if a story breaks, you're the go-to person that a local, national, or even international reporter will come to to give your unique take on that particular story. Consumers want data now. They want answers immediately. And the way you get your message, your song, your voice out there immediately is to embrace social, to embrace digital, and to embrace the internet. So while this is a platform that offers a lot of opportunity, it's also a platform that's very, very noisy. So in order to go about expanding your sphere of influence, in order to go about newsjacking correctly, you have to understand these concepts and then know how to get your song heard. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Right now, the average consumer has the same attention span as a goldfish, about nine seconds. So whatever you're doing, whatever tools, whatever direct marketing, television, radio, internet, whatever you're doing, you have to understand that you have to craft your message in a way where you've literally got nine seconds to capture someone's attention or they're going to move on to the next topic, to the next story. In my opinion, social media, social is the new digital currency. How many of you enjoy being interrupted by commercials on TV, by commercials on the radio? You're driving in your car, you're listening to commercials. I mean, do you really like being interrupted by commercials? Do you like having your day disrupted? Other than one person here that loves commercials. I studied them. That's why I she enjoys studying commercials, and that's a beautiful thing. That's your passion. So remember that when we get to another part of my section. Um, right now with options like Netflix, right now with uh, digital technology, it's really easy for consumers to go out and get answers to their questions without having to create a situation where they're being interrupted. So keep that thought in mind as we get into how to newsjack. And what I mean by that is we are all media companies today. Everything you do has to be done in a way where you can take that project, take that blog post, and be able to repurpose it online. I was listening to presentations yesterday, and with respect to John's newsletter, which sounds like a great newsletter, we were talking about once you do a newsletter, think like a media company. Take that newsletter and repurpose it online. There's about 20 different ways you can do it. You can take that newsletter and create 150 separate tweets, which can go out over the next month. You can take that newsletter and turn it into a podcast and talk about different topics that you've written about in that newsletter and create five or 10 different podcasts. You can take that newsletter and take content and you can share that in the way in two to three minute short videos. So you're not just putting together one item, you're taking one item and you're repurposing it. And that's really important to understand because that's the way media companies work, at least smart media companies, and that's what we all need to do also. Now a friend of mine, David Merriman Scott's a, a gifted speaker, a very uh, a well-known writer. Some of his books have been translated into 18 different languages. They're used in universities across the country. And uh, he came up with the concept of newsjacking. We were newsjacking long before I met David. I didn't know that's what he called it. But after getting to know David, after speaking with him, after reading his books, he's actually got a, a book on newsjacking. I highly recommend. It's David Merriman Scott. Um, we took things to the next level. And I encourage each and every one of you to do the same thing. Uh, what David was talking about is, and by the way, the definition of newsjacking, it refers to the practice of capitalizing on the popularity of a news story to amplify, amplify your sales and marketing success. So for example, last night when I got back up to our hotel room, we were watching the news and I noticed a a uh, $60 million marijuana bust here in North Texas. So if I was a Texas attorney and I was using these concepts, and I'll walk you through the specific steps, that $60 million marijuana bust, that's an interesting story for this local region. If I was a criminal defense attorney, I'd be writing an article about search and seizure. I'd be writing an article about due process. I'd be writing an article if I was a civil rights attorney about whether or not marijuana should be a legal drug 
uh, for uh, health purposes. There are all types of ways to take this story without actually writing about the actual story and spinning it so that it actually complements your area of practice. There are no limits. How many of you have seen the Justin Bieber deposition? Because if you haven't, Google it. It is comedy at its best, okay? And uh, so what we did is we wrote a little bit about how not to, how not to give a deposition. This is a good ex example of what not to do when you're in a deposition. And this particular post, using the same techniques that we talked about, also just exploded. It didn't explode in the way where reporters were contacting us for interviews on the Justin Bieber deposition. But what it did do is it did help expand our sphere of influence where we were getting comments from Australia, we were getting comments from the UK about this particular case. We were giving our perspective as trial lawyers as to what happened in the South African trial. So if you go to our blog post here, what you'll see is just a short three to four sentences each day on what happened at the trial and what we thought might happen next based upon the evidence presented. This case you know, had global attention and we were contacted by reporters from around the world with respect to our take on what do you think is going to happen next or what does that piece of evidence mean or moving forward. I've been down on the beach for a run and now kind of a walk and uh, I've watched breaking news on my smartphone and immediately have done exactly what I've told you I've done. And within five minutes, I'm on the phone with a reporter while I'm on the beach on my smartphone giving commentary as to the unique perspective. And you guys can do the same thing. Power of using your smartphone. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you, raise your hands, how many of you have your smartphone out on the table or in your hand right now? Raise your hand. Keep your hands up. How many of you have your smartphone in a bag, in a briefcase with you right now? Okay, is there anybody here with not, that does not have his or her smartphone with them right now? Look around the room, that should tell you guys something. This isn't brain surgery, okay? The power of the smartphone, the power of this media company, this is your new media company, this is what connects all of us. And for those of you that have teenagers, for those of you that have kids, you know what I'm talking about. If you want to communicate with your kids, how do you communicate with your kids? You text them. A majority of, of Americans, 83% of Americans, have a smartphone. More people in the world have access. And remember, we're not talking about a local marketing plan. This is a global effort to expand your sphere of influence. I want people in the UK, I want people in Australia, I want people in Germany to know about your firm here in the United States. They're reaching out to their friend, their connection here in Texas for a comment. That's a big deal for somebody in Germany. It's a unique twist, okay? That reporter has a connection that no one else has. A Maasai warrior in Kenya, and I love this example, using a smartphone has more information at his fingertips than the President of the United States just 18 years ago. They're connected to the internet. This is where people go to get answers to their questions. Take that concept back to the United States. Take that concept back to your state. Take that concept back to your city. Okay, there's a pretty good chance that in not too far in the future, everybody, every single potential client that you're ever going to want to represent is going to be connected to you by this smartphone. How many of you know what these are? Meerkats. Meerkats. Cute little things, huh? And how about these? How about this? It's a periscope. Meerkat and Periscope. With a raise of hands, how many of you know what Meerkat and Periscope are? Okay, is it, how many of you knew about Meerkat and Periscope before this convention? That's very, very impressive. And let me tell you why it's impressive. I was at Social Media Day in San Diego last week. 400 social media experts in the audience. When that question was asked, 10 hands went up. When the gentleman then said, okay, you know what, the, what it is, how many of you have actually initiated your own Meerkat or Periscope? Everybody's hands went down but two people. And I'm proud to say one of my, my hand was still up. Trust me, I mean, write this down. Mitch Jackson told me that Meerkat and Periscope are going to be game-changing devices. And I really, truly believe this technology is going to be changing everything. From this smartphone, with simply a push of one button, I can be live broadcasting to the world. 
And when I live broadcast, everybody that I'm broadcasting to, especially those people that are following me on Twitter, have access to the link to click on, and they're instantly connected to my broadcast. Now, that's what's really cool about Meerkat and Periscope. But what's even better is Meerkat and Periscope allow your audience to engage you in real time back. While I'm live broadcasting, there are live comments coming up. And your audience can ask questions. Your audience can ask you to do things while you're live broadcasting. In the newsjacking techniques that I'm talking about, I've been down on the beach uh, that I like to go to on the weekends. Broken story broke. I immediately pulled out my periscope. While I'm on the beach, I'm talking to the camera. I'm giving the audience a view of the surfers and just small talking and having fun. And I start talking about the event. And as I'm talking about the event, it's being streamed out live to Twitter. And as it's being streamed out live to Twitter, it's being shared and retweeted by other people on Twitter. So within five or 10 minutes, I had, I think, 220 people from around the world, because you can tell where people are. One of the techniques with live streaming is ask people, where's everybody visiting us from today? And then they start, oh, you know, the UK, New Jersey, Texas. And you start this dialogue. Uh, with that particular breaking story, immediately, even though I was on the beach, I'm live streaming with reporters and giving them my take on that breaking story. Later on that day, uh, we talked on the phone and handled things in the more traditional sense. So if you're not live streaming using Meerkat and Periscope, you might want to think about doing it. Another item that Meerkat just rolled out about a week ago is called Cameo. And while I'm Meerkatting somebody, I'm basically having a live video interaction with you I can ask someone on the audience, I can click their username and invite them to join me, or I can ask live, would anyone like to join me and comment on this particular topic? What then happens is a request comes in, I click a button, you now take over the video for 60 seconds or until I press the stop button. So it allows you to bring in your audience to share their thoughts, to share their, their opinions during a live meerkat which is more engagement. It's more engagement, it's more participation. It's about, it's about being real, being transparent with your audience. People love that. They go on your Meerkat stream, they start sharing their thoughts and their stories, and guess what they do? They click a button, they tweet that out to their 5,000 followers. Those 5,000 followers come back, they start following you on these platforms, they start following you on Twitter, and it just continues to snowball. I've written a couple of blog posts about trying cases using these platforms. I would love to have my jurors have a platform like this while in the jury box. And while I'm cross-examining a witness, I would love those jurors to be communicating with me in real time and asking me, follow up on that question. What color was the light again? Ask more questions about that. Or I would like the jurors to say, leave that little old grandmother alone. She didn't do anything wrong. You know, it's like, you never know. We get to talk to the jurors after a trial, right? What could I have done differently? You know, well, how could I have tried this case differently? I'd rather have a real-time interaction with the jury. Now think about this for a second. If I'm getting questions that are inappropriate, inadmissible, I can ignore them. I don't need to ask every question or touch upon every topic that's coming across my, my device. But if I'm using a smartphone, if I'm using an Apple Watch to receive this information, if I'm using a Google Glass type of technology, which I have used, um, both in depositions and in other situations, Imagine that real-time interaction from the jury, from the judge, okay, even from opposing counsel or your expert consultant sitting in the back of the courtroom, or if I'm trying a case in California, my expert consultant back in New York. There's a live video feed. They don't need to be there in the courtroom with you. Once again, I do see trial work eventually incorporating this type of real-time streaming. In leaving you today, I want to share what Justin Musk, who is once married to Elon Musk, the billionaire Telsa CEO, uh, said when she was interviewed on Quora about what made her husband, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Richard Branson so unique and so successful. And what Justin said in her response was, one reason they became the entrepreneurs that they became is because they can't or don't or won't fit the structures and routines of corporate life. They're dyslexic, they're autistic, they have ADD, and they're square pegs in round holes. They piss people off, they get into arguments, they rock the boat, 
and they laugh in the face of paperwork. And so in leaving the conference today, in leaving all of you today, I would like to challenge each and every one of you to be that round peg in your community, okay? Piss people off every once in a while and take advantage of modern technology and newsjacking, Meerkat and Periscope to develop a new influence around the world. Thank you very much, everybody. Didn't do that.